is the Marcus de Pombal statue in the middle of a huge roundabout. He's the guy who was charged with rebuilding Lisbon after the great earthquake. And it's generally considered that he did a great job. So he gets his own statue. So I'm just walking uphill from the statue, which is behind me towards the palace, which is at the top of this hill. And then I'm going to head to the aqueduct after that. The weather here in Portugal, it's about 20 degrees today. In the sun, it's baking actually. The great yellow sun is reflecting in your deep blue eyes. The day has begun. You spin around, you spin around, you laugh to yourself. And I see... So I've reached the top of what looks like an avenue really. Apart from it hasn't got a road in the centre, it's just a long avenue of grass and gardens. And as you can see down there, the city and the castle on the hill. Nice statue up here too. Not sure what was going on there, some kind of TV show being filmed I think. All of that just to capture a shot of someone on a bicycle. Anyway, I'm at the palace now. I'm not going to go inside, just going to have a look from the outside. It looks a pretty impressive place. Pretty close to the airport here, maybe just a couple of miles. You can hear the aeroplanes in the sky now. I'll bet you that I've got some good shots of actually coming in here yesterday. So I've arrived at the Aqueduct and Water Museum and I've got to tell you a little bit of history here because uh, Lisbon had many things going for it in uh, medieval times but one of the things it didn't have was access to clean water so that was always a problem. So they basically built a viaduct to carry, uh, sorry not a viaduct, an aqueduct to carry water from 36 miles away in the mountains of Sintra and that aqueduct would carry water right into the center of Lisbon so I'm about to have a look at the aqueduct as well as go into the water museum to learn a little about it. So I'm actually inside the waterworks now which is uh, well this was built in the early 1700s to manage the water coming into the city once the aqueduct was built. I think I'm the only person here. It's cost three euros to get in and there's this huge reservoir that's next to me here. It must be, looking down, it must be 20, 30 feet deep. Really clear, crystallized water. I can't believe there isn't more people here. Or at least one or two more. Well, if that isn't impressive enough, behind the camera is the original channel that they used for the water to get it from the aqueduct into the water box. Here we go. I'm not sure where this is going. I think it might be, oh, there's the sun. This might be the, oh, it's the top of the waterworks. I thought it might give access to the aqueduct. Wow. I'll tell you what, there's some pretty impressive views up here. There's the roof. See the Lisbon skyline with the castle over there in the background as well. This is part of the aqueduct. 
but you can see that top part there is where the small channel was that brought the water in. Apparently if I walk 20 minutes in that direction, I get access to the aqueduct itself where it's at its largest. I'm out of the waterworks and the guy in there said to me that the actual aqueduct starts in about a kilometre. I believe I've just arrived at the starting point of the aqueduct. So I'm going to go to reception and see if I can get on the aqueduct itself. So another three euros to get into the aqueduct itself which I think is pretty fair price. So as I might have said a little bit earlier, this uh, aqueduct was built in 1746, which of course was about nine years before the great earthquake of Lisbon. And remember that earthquake destroyed 90% of the city, but incredibly enough, it didn't touch this aqueduct. The aqueduct is built from stone and was an incredible feat of engineering for its time and I guess the true test of how good it was, was that earthquake. As I said, it was really one of the most... Uh, I'm on the flight path of the airport. So every now and again I keep getting a plane, that's a little one, but there has been some really large jumbo jets come across. So, as I was saying, an incredible feat of engineering for its time. I'm going to continue on and take a look at some of the arches a little bit further up. the most famous part of the aqueduct now and that's the part that crosses the Alcantara Valley. It consists of about 14 arches, the highest of which rises about 200 feet, about 60 meters above the ground. So I've been walking for about a kilometer now and I'm across the other side of the valley and at the end of the area where you're permitted to walk it does continue on for many, many miles, but there's no access up there. So I'm going to turn around and head back to about the halfway point where there is an opening and you can essentially get through to the other side. Because remember in here, in this wall here, is the actual channel where the water would have um, been flowing through and then the other side of the channel is another walkway on the other side of the viaduct So that's where I'm heading you can see pretty well from here the valley itself So I'm on one side of it. I started out right over there somewhere on the other side of the valley The aqueduct crosses that valley in pretty spectacular style keeping in mind that this was built all those years ago Right, it's quarter to five. I've got an hour and a quarter before I've got to be back across where I started because that's where it closes so I'm going to briskly walk back and then the other side should give me some good views of the setting sun due to set about half past five. So I'm back at the point where I can cross through the channel and out across into the other side. So let's do it. Here we are. You can see the sun is fairly low over in the, in fact, it's five o'clock, so it'll be setting in about 10, 15 minutes. As a result of how low it is, it's lighting up this side of the aqueduct brilliantly. Silhouette time.
Right, so I'll take a stroll up to the end again, but this time on the other side. And by that time, I think the sun will be setting, so we should get some pretty good shots of the valley as the sun sets. It's a lot warmer this side, actually. It was getting a bit chillier the other side, but now I'm in the sun again. I'm glad I didn't put the jumper on. Well, just like that, the sun has slipped behind the mountains. So this part of Lisbon is definitely outside the touristy areas. Not exactly sure 100% where it is, but it looks like a pretty poor area. There's lots of shacks, broken roofs, smashed up brickwork buildings. And there's definitely a school over there as well somewhere, because I can hear a load of children playing, like they're playing in a, a playground. And I've reached the end on the other side now. So once again, I'm gonna turn around and head back. So there we have it. I'm almost back to where I started. I'm gonna leave the aqueduct and I'm gonna head back to a train station which is about 10 minutes walk away and then back into the center of Lisbon. So I know it's getting dark but from down here you can see just how huge these arches actually are. This video in particular shows you how the aqueduct stretches across the valley to the other side. 